Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakeween Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey, you guys and gals, Nary here from Drakeween Gaming. It's so you on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace, Case Gaze Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, that's a fair point. I can't pretend to know what's going on with you and your family, but I have some idea of how those relationships can be a pain to manage at times. You do? Mm-hmm. I just try to not focus on it too much. I keep busy and do my work. <laughs> And that's usually enough to keep me from getting in any trouble. Usually, huh? Keisuke mumbles to himself, a complicated look flashing across his face that I can't seem to decipher. For what it's worth, I hope things settle down for you. Thank you, Arata. Part of me wants to chime into the conversation, but I don't trust my ability to talk, to talk about it without revealing something that I shouldn't. So I settle on using my food as an excuse to stay silent. I know Keisuke values his privacy quite a bit, so I'd rather not do anything to mess with it. By the time we all finish eating, it hits me that I... That we've been out of the house for almost ten hours. The sun had already set by the time we got to the shopping district, but now the moon is really fully out. I really wasn't expecting to be out for, for, out for this long when Keisuke first said he wanted to practice a little bit. Or, wait, did he actually even say that? I'm struggling to remember his exact words. Ugh, I really have to start paying a little more attention to what, what people say around me. A few hours later. We eventually left the shopping district and took the train back to our, back to our station walking half the way together before wishing Shuichi goodnight and splitting up. By the time we finally get home, my body feels as heavy as lead. The very idea of getting up tomorrow morning is horrifying to me, but I still manage to check if my mom if mom is home, put our clothes through a wash and dry cycle, and trudge my way upstairs to my room. As soon as the door closes behind me, I waste no time in, waste no time in chucking away my clothes and falling face first onto the soft, comfy bed. Heaven. <laughs> I lift my head from the mattress, my eyes immediately shifting to my chair where I had grown used to seeing Keisuke sitting randomly throughout the day. What's so funny? Um, everything. You threw yourself onto the bed and then groaned heaven like some kind of bed-starved zombie. Is that even a thing? Not sure, but it was the only descriptor I could think of. Aren't you tired? I thought for sure you'd be in bed by now. Of course I am. That doesn't give me a free pass to neglect my homework. Ugh, homework. A voice comes out with a tad more disgust than I had intended on using, but by then it's too late to take it back anyway. Keisuke eyes me silently for what feels like an eternity, probably waiting for me to do or say, or say something, and I already know what it is that he's thinking. As soon as he said that stupid curse word, it planted itself into my mind, and now I can't pretend I don't like I don't remember it. Fine, I'll do mine before I go to bed too. I knew you would. You know, you don't know me that well. Don't go getting all smug just because you've been anticipating me somewhat accurately the past few days. Second, y'all. Water time. Alright, y'all, and we are back. Alright, let's jump right into it. I got plenty to drink now. I would never! Despite his denial, I could see the hint of a smile showing itself on the edges of Keisuke's mouth. Deciding to ignore it, I grab a second chair, grab my school bag, and quickly get to work on finishing my homework. I'm not going for diligence here. In and out. I want to go to bed. Although, it is really, it is really hard to not stay, say anything in the middle of this awkward silence punctuated only by the sound of pencil writing on paper. You don't have to leave if you don't want to. Just throwing that out there. I know. I really feel like I should, though. I've been here long enough. So long as you know you don't have to, that's fine. I just don't want you to leave because you feel awkward or anything of the sort. It's all right. I appreciate you checking in, in with me about it. I, um, I know I dropped the news on you at a very awkward time. No kidding. Couldn't you have picked your timing a little better? My mind went there on its own. It can't be helped. I'm sure it could be a little bit of effort, but I don't want to make KSK feel bad about it, so I'll bite my tongue for the moment. And just to make sure everything is, uh, okay between us, right? Hmm? What a strange question. Why wouldn't it be? Like, like, like I said, I'm just making sure. Yes, things are fine between us. You worry, you worry too much. Your bodyguard seems to want to bash my face in. I wasn't exactly great to you last week, and your family's being a huge pain. Can you understand why a guy might get a tad paranoid? Hmm, I suppose so. I'll give you a pass this time. That's so. Well, well, aren't you kind? We fall back into silence, continuing to work on our homework without a pause. 
I can't tell whether we're both super diligent for having a whole conversation without taking our eyes off of our notebooks, or if we're just or if we're just feeling too awkward to look each other in the eye while talking about it. For sure, thinking about the circumstances behind that conversation earlier today is uh challenging. I really don't want to get a boner right now, so I better stop remembering. Oh, and just so you know, Yuichi. My ear twitches at the sound of my name being called. Y yeah? I love you. Ah! A feeling like electricity runs through my body, making every last strand of fur on my body stand at attention. And yet, despite my body tensing up so suddenly, I say the first words that come to my mind before I realize it. Love you too. Oh! Wow, he got a... Uh... Wow. Hmm. Keisuke got those words, but still... Sho doesn't get them. Interesting. God! What did I just say? Crap, 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 crap! My heart is beating so fast it feels like it's gonna burst! Once the weight of what I said fully catches up to me, I completely lose it. I, I can't deal with this anymore, not today! I grab my notebook and lean forward on my desk, hiding my now completely red face under it. Even without seeing him, I can hear the hair chuckling under his breath. Stupid, sneaky, long ears. He caught me off guard on purpose so I'd respond on reflex. After what feels like an eternity of me whimpering while trying and failing to regain my composure, I finally decide to fully check out, leaving my half-finished homework atop the desk and climbing into the bed, hiding myself under the covers. In that position and filled with embarrassment, I eventually conk out for the night. June 28th, Wednesday, the day of the apocalypse. No. Think now. Is quarter time. Hmm. Okay. As I'm standing over my bed, checking and rechecking every pocket of my travel bag, and continue muttering to myself as I mark off items in a mental checklist while I go along. And that's underwear. Okay, towels are okay. Shirts. How many shirts? One, two, three, six shirts. Is that enough? Yeah, I guess that's enough. When I was a kid, I tended to leave packing at the last minute. After all, packing is annoying. Packing is boring. Who likes packing? But because of that, there was definitely more than one time when I forgot something important. And yeah, I'm sure it's not too bad when you're just in town, just when you're in town just an hour away, or when your coach can help you get more of whatever it is you forgot. No sweat. You mean, but when you're on the other side of the country and realize you forgot to pack, <sighs> forgot to pack underwear or pants or shampoo. What kind of some adult? What kind of some insane adult wants to go out at 9 p.m. while staying in a hotel in the middle of an unfamiliar city because the 12 year old their chaperone he forgot to bring shampoo? So to avoid that, I packed the morning of my trip. And I check and recheck everything at least a handful of times, if not more. Obsessive? Maybe a little. Secure? 100%. You know, you wouldn't need to drive yourself crazy over your bag if you hadn't ignored packing until so late. And while I'm going through said obsessive packing, Keisuke is sitting at the other end of the bed, watching me with a smile like this is the funniest thing he's ever seen. Stupid cocky hair, this cock stupid cocky smile. You call it late, I call it early. I used to be much worse. I'd start packing half an hour before I was supposed to be in the bus. That was being late. Like, that was being late. Just because you used to be worse doesn't mean that you're good now. I really don't want to hear this from the guy that, that had someone else pack and deliver his things. Well, what other choice did I have? If I went back to the state before the trip, I'm fairly certain I wouldn't have been allowed to come back here. And I did say I'd only be going back after the trip. I think there was a lot of room between don't go back home at all and never leave home, but then again, you're the only one who understands your family's unique brand of insanity, so who am I to talk? Also, you have way too much stuff. Did you really need three bags for this trip, besides your tennis gear? It's what I always pack with me. Makes it 100% sure that I won't miss or forget anything. Man, my back hurts just looking at all that stuff. I don't even want to imagine being the one lugging all of it around. Just so long as you don't ask me to carry it for you. I won't. Don't worry that pretty little head of yours so much. Hmm. I'm not used to being complimented like this. You don't... Don't talk like... Don't talk about my head. Heh. <laughs> You're cute. And very easy to flutter. You're very easy to fluster, it seems. I'll throw a pillow at you, I swear to God. Heaven... F heaven forfend. Not a pillow. It's my only weakness. Second, y'all. Alright, that one's down. Alright. Let's do it, okay. You're such a dick sometimes. And aren't you the lucky one? You're the only person that gets to see me be this much of a dick. What a prize. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's everything I need. I have shirts, pants, shorts, underwear, fur care, products, towels. I should be good to go. 
You said that five minutes ago. Don't you have something better to do than to watch me pack while criticizing? I could leave, but wouldn't you miss me then? Not from this far away. What do- Ow, you actually threw a pillow at me! You did say it was your only weakness. Oh, <laughs> aren't you hilarious? You know it. And you have the gall to say that I'm a dick. Between the two of us, you're definitely the bigger one. Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. Yours definitely seemed bigger, but then again, it's been a little while. What? Oh my god, I'm not talking about that! <laughs> yes, I'm aware. Once again, you're too easy. And once again, shut up! <laughs> stop throwing pillows at me! And stop being a wise ass! Aw, oh, but don't you love me when I'm a wise ass? God! I let it slip once two days ago, and he has not let it go! Every time I think I'm regaining my footing, he pulls that card out and teases me about it. It's hard to keep my cool and dish, ba and dish back when he can disarm me so easily. You, I, 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 shut up! Hmm, duly noted. I'll stop for now. If only because you seem like your head is about to explode. You are aware that you can just not, just not say these things, right? You don't have to poke the wood and keep teasing me. Huh. I've never been the best at not leaving well enough alone. Evidently. Uh, Aniki, are you taking your regular everyday toothbrush with you on the trip? Because I was in the laundry room and found your leather pouch with your travel toothbrush and some other bathroom stuff in it. Oh, crap! I completely forgot. Um, thanks, Aki. Give me a second. So much for being good to go, huh? You shush. Hey, Aki, thanks for the heads up. No prop, hmm? Aki cocks his head to the side, looking past me and at my bed. A lot less messy than last time. A uh, good job. Good job. What are you, my boss? I'm just saying you're doing good. That doesn't help your point at all. Uh, by the way, will you be going to watch the competition, akiyoshi -kun? Yeah, our coach was talking about organizing a bus for us to go, since we have a few players from my club competing as well. Oh, I didn't know that. So your club has players in the same age bracket as us. It's a private club, so they have players of all ages. Elementary school, high school, adults, elderly. Anyone who wants to join is allowed in, basically. There you go. Know. Water time. Oh. Oh, yeah, this is good. Hmm. So long as they can pay, you mean? Well, yeah, of course. But what about you, Case Case san Aniki never says much about it, but how do you feel? Are you nervous? Hmm, a little bit. Unlike Yuichi, my prospects are nowhere near as rosy. I I'm trying to be optimistic, but... You'll do fine. You've improved so much since the prefectural competition that I barely even recognize you as the same player. Heh. <laughs> Thanks, Yuichi. It'll be nice to get to watch you to play again. It's been a while. That it has. And what about your clubmates? Anyone good that I should look out for? Uh, I guess. I think two of our guys are seated. Oh. That's news to me. Seated players, huh? What are their names and their ranks? What can you tell me about their play styles? When did this turn into an interrogation? Keisuke, relax. You're going to freak my brother out. Oh, sorry. I can get somewhat intense when it comes to tennis. It's alright. I don't know much about their play style since I don't usually bother watching the high schoolers play. If I'm there, I'd much rather play myself, you know. Uh, but I do know that they're ranked 13 and 16, I think. That's about right anyway. 13 and 16. I see. If that's the case, then they'd be in a completely different bracket from you and I. The only way you'd ever play against them is if you, is if you met in the finals. Hmm. And there it goes, getting lost in thought. It doesn't happen all that often, but when it does, it's harder to snap him out of it than it is June when he spaces out. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our Gold Tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our Ultimate Tier anyway. If you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!